guys, it's me again. Um, I figured it's time to maybe show you the chicken coop that we had built earlier this spring. Um, and after that, I'm going to put some eggshells around my tomato plants just to help them with some nitrogen and um, just kind of give them a boost. Yes, baby. Oh, is that a stick? Thank you. All right, so what we're gonna do is feed the chickens, um, show them to you, give you a little tour of the inside. It's not much, but um, we kind of just made them, made the plans off the top of our heads, just looking at a couple of the other um, coops online. So it works, it's cute. So let me show you. All right, here are the crazy chickens. They all have names, there's only six of them. And here is, we did a little latch just to kind of help uh, keep critters out and uh, just make it simpler for us and not so simple for a little girl to climb in. Um, all this wood was stained. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for us. So uh, this is a solar powered light. It's pretty cool. It's a motion detector too. And I also have solar lights right here. So the solar panel is here. And as you can see, somebody colored on it, which is okay. And uh, here we have some... Hi, Pua! So that's Pua. That's Hey Hey. That's Bubbles. The black one is Queenie. That's Guppy, and we're missing Lacey. She's inside. Um, she's decided to get very broody, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, so here we have some thyme, some sage, and I planted these last year. They really like it. <laughs> I have them here just for a snack for the girls. Um, and then over here I have some lemon balm. It's really good. They enjoy it. Um, all of these came back by themselves. I had them outside. Really didn't do anything with them. And uh, all of a sudden I see the spring. Um, they started coming back up. So what better way to have just garden snacks for the chickens that come back. And they can munch on. So occasionally I'll just <laughs> rotate them around so they can have access to it. Um, and that is a water bucket. It's a heated water bucket and um, it works really well in the winter time. Uh, if it gets below freezing, it'll turn on automatically and if it's above, I believe, I think the trigger point is between 32 and 37, I think. Um, that's when it'll turn on. But here they are munching. You see your chick chicks? <laughs> you see your chick chicks? Alright, so. Um, we also did some wood mulching inside. Um, all of this was sand before where I said in the last video. We had uh, a pool here. So we chipped some trees in the backyard and we just threw some of the mulch in there. And I do have this um, with some, what is that? With some little bricks that I got from Home Depot just to kind of keep any animals from trying to crawl in underneath. We actually, I think we had either a raccoon or a um, possum get in a few months ago. Actually, I think it was last month and it got in through over there, and there was blood everywhere, so it wasn't very cool. So that little animal, I come outside, and um, that night I actually had told Chandler, my husband, that we needed to close up the girls because I just didn't feel right with them being out in the open for some odd reason, and I'm glad that we closed them that night because um, that animal went into the coop and if the door was open, if the door would have been open, 
Here they come running. Hold on. Hi, babies. If the door would have been open, um, that animal would have gone in through that door and our chickens would have been no more. And that's happened before, not in this property and the other property that we had. So um, let's open up the inside of the coop and show you. So in here, we're doing like the deep litter method just to help with the composting. Um, we have to age uh, their chicken manure, their chicken poop, for at least six months. Uh, because their poop is what's considered hot. Um, if you don't know what that means, it means that their uh, levels of nitrogen is really high. And so if you put it on any kind of plants, it'll kill them. What they do... We'll just put a pile of them, um, of the straw, and they just kind of peck through it. And they scratch and they peck. And let's see. Let's see if Lacey will say hello. Hi, Lacey. What are you doing? Are you a little pterodactyl? What are you doing? Are you broody, baby? I'm sorry. We don't have any eggs for you to hatch. She's been in this box. Um, she'll get out and she'll come back in, but she's been like this broody for, I want to say about four or five days, maybe a little bit longer. Um, Queenie started out with the whole broodiness and I just kind of gently shoved her out of the box and she kind of broke out of it she's not too bad anymore but uh, Lacey that's Lacey because she is a blue lace wine a dot I don't know how to pronounce it but um so we just called her Lacey because her feathers look like lace so and there she is she is beautiful they're all beautiful but this one seems to be my husband's favorite. Let's see. Are there any eggies in there? Oh, we got something. Oh, Queenie gave us an egg. She didn't lay for the past two days. Look how pretty. Uh, Queenie is... I can't remember her breed. What you got? Styrofoam? Oh, thanks. Um, but yeah, I'll put the breeds down in the description box um, if you want to read some more information on them. Uh, they're very friendly. They're very docile. Um, they've been great with uh, our little one. So um, they're just pretty cool. But let's stop talking and let's get to feeding because these girls are hungry. All right, so now let me put this egg here. Um, these barrels have been a life changer. Chandler brought them home from work. Um, and so they're, they're pretty watertight. I don't get any kind of moisture in them um, with that ring that kind of clips and it secures it. Um, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, and we just put their feet in here. They have the crumbles or the pellets. And we'll just take this. This is a three quart. I usually fill it almost to the top um, because that seems to fill their little feeder. They had a bigger feeder before. Um, we used a PVC pipe and I kind of rigged it into a feeder, but. Um, with the rain and the way that the rain was hitting, it was letting the moisture go into the PVC tube and so mold started growing in there and we don't want that because then the girls can get sick. So we just went through a traditional um, feeder until we can get the like a five gallon bucket, drill holes in them and just kind of gravity feed them. So I have to kind of bribe them with a little bit before I go in because they are pterodactyls and now I can go in oh. okay oh goodness let me just shut the 
this out. This was given to us by our neighbor. She used to have chickens. We've had chickens before. We had a ton of chickens. Um, and they kind of, when we moved to this property, it got a little unruly. All right, girls. You gonna eat? All right. But yeah, like what I was saying, we had close to, sorry. We had close to 30 chickens um, at our last property that we rented and we had a lot of the um, just a regular red and white chickens um god I can't remember their name i'm horrible with remembering names but i can point them out to you if if i see them uh, but they were doing fine at that property and then when we moved here we had their coop put underneath one of the big trees. Hi, baby. And uh, I think some of the wild outside birds were leaving their droppings behind and they started getting sick. And so we were negligent to, you know, what was going on before, because we didn't know. We never had chickens before those. And so they started dying. And I think it was coccidia that they had. So I treated some of them, and some of them were just great. Um, I had three roosters in that bunch, and one of them was just so majestic. He was beautiful, um, and he died, and that was like one of the saddest days of my life. <laughs> um, and we had two, chi um, two ducks, and uh, they got sick too, and they passed. Um, that was before we had our little girl, and um, I don't think I've ever cried so hard in my life. Um, if you have uh, have ever had ducks, uh, they have a quite uh, funny personality, and so I got really attached to them. Do you need help, babe? Come here. Walk around. I don't need you to fall. Okay. Feet first, please. Feet first. She's trying to get down. Do you need help? Ooh. All right, there you go. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's oh, let's get some of these eggshells in the garden bed for the raised bed. And so what I did, um, we're we're alternating between using the eggshells for part of the compost. We feed them back to the girls, like we just crush them up and let them dry after we use them and uh, I read about crushing up the eggshells for tomato plants so we will do that and see it's really bright outside so let's get that in all right so I'm putting my phone on the raised bed so what I did I just got some of the eggs and let's see. There we go. I got some of the eggs, and we have a Ninja um, blender, so they were already dry. So um, I put them in there, and I alternated between uh, some of the pieces that were already crushed and some pieces that were just halved. And um, I put them in there. Hit the pulse button for about 15 seconds. And oh, hi. <laughs> But what are you doing? Oh, 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 okay, thanks. <laughs> and um, just pulsated them for about 15 seconds and they became this powdery substance. All right, so you have some help. <laughs> Thank you. Got a handful. So what I did with that one, I just Kind of hard to kneel down and hold a phone and do this but we're making it work right um just scatter it around the base of the plant and try to work it in just a little bit where it's already um finely ground it should be easier for it to work in the soil for the nutrients 
So if you can see, it's just very fine, fine, fine. hold me accountable on my methods. This is really the first time that I'm doing this with uh, my tomato plants. I know that you can put crushed tomatoes or crushed eggshells um, in the hole when you start digging the holes up for the tomato plants when you transplant them. So I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick and I'll come back. Okay, so that's done. I just turned on the water faucet um, so I can go ahead and give them a deep watering. I didn't water them yesterday evening because I wanted to wait until um, I got those eggshells in and then deeply water them. So what I'm using here is one of the water wands. I love this thing. I picked it up at Home Depot for less than $20. I think it was about $16. Um, and it's been my best friend. Um, I can reach some of the places that I can normally not reach with a traditional hose. Um, so yeah, I'm out of breath. Um, so what you want to do is just let me let out some of the water. Or the air. You want to keep the water as low as possible just to avoid any splash back on the plants to prevent the leaves from getting wet and disease free. That tomato plant looks kind of sad. I think she got a little shocked when um, one of the chickens went in and scratched around. So let's try to do this real quick here. So like I said yesterday, or in the last video, I have um, Roma tomatoes in here and Oregon Spring. They are, apparently they're really good for sauces and tastes. Um, I've never grown them before. This is the first time. Last year we did some Cherokee purple tomatoes. Um, and they were pretty good. Last year was also a very... Uh, important learning lesson with growing tomatoes and overcrowding and everything. Uh, you don't want to overcrowd them because then they get sick too. Um, but Lowe's last year was doing the Spring Fest giving away little tomato plants and we got one and it was a cherry tomato plant which if you don't know cherry tomato plants the one that we got was indeterminate and so she took over we don't know what to do, and I vow to never again grow cherry tomatoes. We haven't this year. Um, the only thing that we have close to cherry tomato is the ground cherries, which are um, becoming seedlings right now, and they're in the greenhouse. They're not out yet. So, yeah, that's... I've just finished watering um, the tomato plants. Let me show you. Just giving them a nice drink of water. We haven't had rain in a couple of days. Um, and I don't know when we're going to get some more rain in the forecast. There's nothing planted here. I'm just trying to keep the soil wet. And I do believe I'm going to do the same with my other 
tomato plant in the greenhouse. I'll take you with me. this up anyway oh look we have a little strawberry baby I saw her yesterday but she didn't have any red on her yet so she just started turning right we are excited uh, we call dibs on who gets the next strawberry in our house usually the baby gets it first um, let me turn on this fan okay and, um, so what I did last night, I did clip off that little sucker off of the tomato plant. It's a little short, or a little shorter than what I really wanted it to, um, but hopefully she'll sprout. And if not, then I'll just let another sucker off the tomato plant go. And I also clipped off some of the Italian basil and I stuck her in water. And it looks like she's sprouting some roots already. Let's see if I can get that in the shot. Teeny, teeny, tiny. Which, that's pretty awesome. That's amazing. Um, that's my first time propagating any kind of leaf like that. Um, let me check on Little Miss. Let's see what she's doing. And she's climbing up. <laughs> she's coming. Hey. Hi, cutie pie. Mama. All right, so let's put some of these eggshells in there. Give it a little watering. I'm not going to water her too much because I did water her last night. I didn't think about putting any of this. Uh, the eggshells in the plant. Um, I did top her off a little bit more with that fox farm soil just to make her a little bit more uh, nutrient dense. And I filled up a gallon of water um, since our water here has chlorine in it, if you leave it uncovered for about 24 hours, that chlorine will dissipate and evaporate into the air. And again, I made this grow bag, I say it might be like a three gallon grow bag. I don't know. I wasn't too sure with the measurements, I just got the tutorials online and whatnot, um, and I kind of did it as quickly as I can because I needed to get some of the plants out. Um, but that's as far as what I've got for today. We fed the chickens, um, we gave the eggshells to the tomato plants, we did some watering, and uh, I think that's it for today guys. Um, if you have any questions or any comments or anything, just leave them down below. Um, what I'll do is look up the breeds of the chickens that we have, and I'll put their names down. And if you are interested in any of the same chickens, we got ours at the Rural King by our house, by our house um, August of last year. So I want to say they were almost a week old, August 5th of last year. And they were the cutest things. Um, so they are almost a year old now. Um, in a few months. And they've just been, they've been great. Um, I've got my little gardener over there with her hoe uh, playing in the, with the leaves. Um, and that's pretty much it. I will, like I said, I'll put the pictures of the breeds down in the description box and if you have any questions or comments or anything um, just let me know all right thanks for coming by <laughs>